What's poppin' me, Hunter? It's your boy back with another video. Now, for those who don't know, on my Patreon page last weekend, I released a long video that was almost an hour in length that was covering some development of animations I was doing on the Wolf Form in Unity. Um, so this is going to be a rather quick video. Today's Let's Talk is going to be about the atmosphere in Castlevania and what I'm going for here. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Castlevania has really become Kittyvania over the last couple of years when it comes to the DS, Game Boy Advance, and even to some extent games that came before that. Though I really believe the issue started around Rondo of Blood with the introduction of Maria. The reason I say this is while Rondo of Blood is a fucking masterpiece of pure sexiness to the point that it gives me a fucking hard on beyond all belief, just talking about it right now is making me frisky. I mean, the game is just... It's aged so well too, it's amazing to this day. And it saddens me that we have a little girl who's running around throwing animals as weapons in a game like this. It just totally destroys the atmosphere and the vibe of the game and I really don't know what they were thinking with this. Again, don't get me wrong, it's great that we have a second playable character, but a little girl throwing animals? Really? In a game about a guy that's going to slaughter the undead who have burnt down a village, slaughtered all of its inhabitants, and is run by a demon lord vampire who's going around and wants nothing less than the extermination of all mankind in the most gruesome, bloody, and violent manner possible? Really? What the fuck were they thinking? She does not belong in the game, not as a playable character, period. And I think this is where Castlevania really began to have an issue with its identity, with the tone shifting from a dark, gothic, foreboding kind of atmosphere to a more kiddy, somewhat lighthearted one. Don't get me wrong. You know, this doesn't mean all of the enemies in the game were suddenly these little adorable creatures. No, that, that's an exaggeration, but... I mean, it, it just blows my mind how enemies like Persephone exist in the game. In the original game she appeared in, Castlevania X68000 or Castlevania Chronicles, whichever name you choose to refer to it as, Persephone was a maid that would pop in the screen, throw kunai in all directions and jump off the screen. She was a real hazard. If you managed to land a hit on her and didn't kill her, she would, don't get me wrong, she already looked like a zombie, she already looked clearly undead, but when you struck her and it didn't kill her, it was like she would totally flip out and unleash her demonic side, hurling fireballs looking totally demented and twisted, and it was ridiculous. The change was just like, wow, the first time I saw it was like, holy shit, that looks crazy. It looked scary, and it fit in so good with the Castlevania motif. Just this dark, kind of monstrous, foreboding atmosphere. I mean, let's think about this. What is Castlevania about? Castlevania is about a vampire of immeasurable power. So much so that no human being or group of human beings stands a chance of beating him. The church is powerless against him. If their entire legion of knights invaded, they would all be slaughtered and turned into undead servants for him. This guy is not a joke. His castle is not a joke. There are monsters of legend in there like Medusa, the Frankenstein's monster, werewolves, monstrous abominations that devour flesh, break bones, and then worst of all, will bring your soul back to their master to become his eternal slave in unending suffering. The villages near the castle, when it resurrects, they're destroyed. And not in a gentle, quick fashion. They're wiped down the most brutal, violent, horrific fashions imaginable. Your hero, nobody expects him to succeed. Yes, they've heard of the Belmont's strength by later in the series, but the chances of you succeeding are one in a million. Your hero's walking in there thinking this is probably a death sentence. Yeah, he's determined he's going to do his best, but deep down inside he's thinking somewhere, I know there's a very good chance I'm going to die in a horrible fashion. I mean, look at what happens in Castlevania 3 to Cypher. She was petrified in a statue. If it hadn't been because Trevor happened to come along, she would have died. Look at what happened to Grant Dynasty. He was turned into a monster. His soul would have belonged to Dracula for all eternity. Alucard lay in his crypt, wounded according to the Netflix series. Without Trevor, he would have eventually healed, probably taken out his father again, and died. This is not a lighthearted game where we need to have maids running around with vacuum cleaners bowing and greeting people. This is not a game where we should have giant fucking jellyfish swimming around to attack you. Ooh, that's so intimidating. Fornius, a giant jellyfish. Or worse, those other little bastardized blue ones from Order of Ecclesia whose name I can't remember. Gelsos. This is not a game where we should have an invisible man that pops up, throws off his trench coat like, hey, hey, you can't see me, and starts throwing punches and kicks at you. What the fuck part of that is scary. I mean, really, what the fuck part of that is creepy? 
I just don't like what's happened at Castlevania in the last few years. In particular, the DS Vanias took it up to the next level with having brighter, cheerier backgrounds, happier music, enemies that look very cartoony and not all intimidating. I mean, Audio of Ecclesia's Gravedigger is literally the fucking Undertaker with a hat. What the fuck is a wrestling icon doing in a Castlevania game? What the fuck were they smoking? And where can I get some of it for a discount? But back on subject, the Carabia, a giant fucking starfish. That's intimidating, guys. A giant starfish. Automaton, little robots walking around going, let's play, let's play, in a monotone voice. That's scary, right? That's not what Castlevania is supposed to be about. Castlevania is supposed to be about the undead, horrific, deformed creatures warped by Dracula's dark nature that have gone from being normal things like a cat or an owl or a harmless plant to these horrific creatures beyond all comprehension. Not these weird, goofy, mutant-like enemies that looked like they were an alchemist fucking up after he was high on acid, like Glacia, Labelis, or Libia, Menorah, Major, whatever the fuck it's called. What the- really? A bulldog with wings that spits bubbles? Oh, that's scary! I mean, even look at the demons, some of them like the flame and the sea demon, how goofy they look. Moldy corpses. Look at the bees in Portrait of Ruin, how fucking stupid they look. That does not- Th that does not scream out Castlevania. That doesn't scream out Castlevania at all. It screams out Kid Dracula. And that's not what I want this game to be about. I want Castlevania to go back to its darker roots. That doesn't mean I'm going to rip out all the music in the game. That doesn't mean I'm going to rip out all the tiles and redo all of them. No, but maybe do things to add a little more atmosphere to it. Maybe add a little more personality to the monster descriptions to really, really, really convey how horrible what they've become or why this creature is so terrifying you should be afraid of it. Maybe add some more rooms to areas like the alchemy lab that look bland to really convey the horrors that are going on here. I mean, look at Castlevania Chronicles or Castlevania X68000, whichever name you want to use for it. We have a stage where you have balloons, little clowns, and candy bats flying around. And it's ridiculous and kitty. And yet, you also have a stage in that same game that's a torture chamber. There are bodies everywhere with this weird, twisted music that goes along perfectly with the motif of you're walking through a lab where countless, unspeakable, and extremely odd experiments have gone on. Hell, the stage starts off with a two-headed beast dropping out of a pile of skulls that you have to kill. Later on the stage, you see body parts all over the place before running into Frankenstein's creature. I mean, it's amazing. You have these dark, brooding stages, and then you have this one kitty, playful stage. And you know what? Because it's only one stage with these enemies, it doesn't ruin the game. It's a nice break. It's a nice change. It feels a little out of place, but with all the other dark, evil, brooding, gothic stuff going on, you really don't notice it and it doesn't ruin the experience. The same can't be said for a game when you're walking around fighting giant jellyfish. There are skeletal bartenders going around, made with vacuums, and this is stuff you're exposed to in almost every stage. Clowns and acrobats that don't in the least look intimidating or scary. That's not what I want Castlevania to be about. Zakino in Portrait of Ruin is another one that just, what the fuck are we doing with a demon that hands you a rose and looks like a freaking nobleman from the Middle Ages? Really? No, just no. Shit like that, it might be nice to include like an Easter egg like they did with the Dodo, for example. I think that's kind of neat. The Dodo was a neat one. You know, but I mean, I don't want Castlevania to be this lighthearted, cheery series. I want it to be this, I want you to play this and really feel like this is serious. It's why I want the game to start off the first new stage I want to make is a graveyard followed by a destroyed village. I want you to really see the effects of Dracula's, well, not even Dracula's, but the resurrection of Castlevania. How the undead are now walking the land, the graveyards are already filled to the brim so much so that everything looks dilapidated and worn down, there are masses of graves, and then you get into the chapel, it's been destroyed, there's nobody left alive here, just shambling corpses everywhere. You get to the town and it doesn't need to be graphically gory, it doesn't need to be something with this blood splatter everywhere and corpses lying all around, but something more subtle, like if you've never heard of the game Maldita Castilla on the first stage, when you go into town, you have zombies popping out of these houses with pure black windows. You can tell the town is destroyed. And I mean, they don't go crazy with the details. It uses Nintendo level graphics. Well, I'd say mid Nintendo, Super Nintendo graphics, but it's designed to be like a Nintendo era game. I mean, you have these enemies later in the stage that are clearly males walk around by the little dangly bit they have between their legs. That's only a couple of pixels, but they're completely stark naked running around. They look like normal men, except their hands and their head are missing, and there's blood spurting out of the wounds. And right after that is where you see the piles of skulls and the guillotine. 
to show you the horrors the people in this town endured before they became the living dead, and how some of them are still walking around animated and suffering. And then after this room, you see a room with the actual executioners, and you get to kill them, and they're these big, brooding, intimidating-looking guys that you could tell live to only inflict misery. That's atmosphere. That's atmosphere in a game, and that's what I want Castlevania to have again. I don't want to put in stuff where it feels like, oh my god, you have all these cute, cuddly, brightly colored characters. Yes, having a nice color palette is definitely eye-catching, but I want to use lighting, I want to use ambience, I want there to be stages where you feel like, man, this is really creeping me out. On the other side, I don't think every stage needs to be like that. I don't want it to be a thing where we're using dimly lit rooms everywhere and you have to struggle to see everything. No, but just set up an atmosphere that's conducive to being this kind of gothic horror fantasy game where you're a lone hero. In this case, Alucard is out to stop his father. If I created games, car other characters, not all of them would have happy endings. I can tell you now, I have plans for six characters and there are several of those characters considered who would not have happy endings because the fact is, no normal person would be able to enter this castle and make it out alive. If I had, if I get the funding I want to put in a Richter game, I want it to be clear that Richter is a very brash, brutal person. He's here to kill Dracula. He's not here to be nice. He's not here to be buddy-buddy. He's brash, he's arrogant, and he's here to murder the undead. He's not here to be anybody's friend. Same thing for Maria. I want to convey better that Maria's still young. She's still a bit naive. But she does realize the gravity of the horror she's seen at a young age, and it has had some kind of effect on her. I don't want it to become a dramatic thing where we're talking about Maria's internal demons or anything stupid like that. But I just want to better convey what's going on in this game. How people have died, how people are dying right now. This is horrible that the monsters and the demons are coming to Earth, and that Shaft has to be stopped because if it doesn't, millions are going to die. And then worst of all, there's a really ch a real chance that your hero may die as well. That they may not make it through the castle alive because they're surrounded by unspeakable horrors. Anyway, so with that being said, this video has gone on a little longer than I wanted to. But the point is, you don't have to worry. I'm not going to turn this into a cheery, happy game with cutesy enemies. If I put in bosses, I want them to look intimidating and scary. Like Legion, for example. The first time I saw Legion, I walked in this room where I saw R.I.P. This mass grave of unspeakable skulls. I was like, wow. This is nuts, and then the boss pops out of the ground, and it's like, oh, wow, that is horrible. And then you hear the screams from the corpses. You hear the horrific snarl as he gets ready to drop the corpse. Then you hear the screams as the bodies are dropped, and it's just like, wow, this is so fucking creepy. This is horrible. That's the type of feeling I want you to go for, that cold feeling in the pit of your chest. I want you to walk through stages and feel like, oh, man, this is... Just look at that horrible creature there. Does this mean I'm going to redesign all the sprites? No, but I want to get the atmosphere right. If I put in new enemies, they're not going to be cute to little enemies. I want to maybe give enemies some more attacks that would suit them. I maybe want to put some more decorations in areas like the alchemy lab that are bland to really convey what horrible things have gone out here. It doesn't mean I have to remove the original content. It doesn't mean I have to change all the tile sets. No, that's crazy. But it means when I put in new stuff, I can keep this in mind. I can put in some rooms like in the alchemy lab where maybe the lights are busted out. Maybe you're going through where you can see peaks of in the background bodies that were dismembered and horrible experiments and things like that going on. I think the Lacard Chronicles was a perfect game to convey this. You walk in and in the alchemy lab, it's not blood and violence and horrible corpses everywhere, but you can see all kinds of experiments have gone here. You can see the tools and you can see by the creatures running around the stage that it's inferred that horrible things have been done here. I mean, I, the music too, the dark, creepy atmosphere. I feel like Mig and his team got this just right, and this is one of those stages that really, 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 I think, was well done. It really conveys, even with the boss, the horrible, uncanny, and unthinkable things that have gone on here. It's not over the top, but at the same time, it gives you that creeped out feeling, and that's what I want to go for. Anyway, that's all I got to say in this video. It's nothing too major. Not sure what the next video is going to be about, but I'm thinking I might want to pull up another developmental update, especially as far along as the wolf forms now come. For those of you who haven't subscribed, I'll have links down below to my Patreon. You can make donations via PayPal. If you don't want to do any of that, hey, that's just fine. I put links to the forums and Facebook as well. Feel free to join them. Okay, so just like a fresh new light bulb in the project always, I'm gone. Deuces.